policeman is interrogating three men who are training to become detectives to test their skills in recognizing a suspect. The policeman shows a picture to the first guy for five seconds and then hides it. This is your suspect, he says. How would you recognize him? The first guy replies, that's easy. We catch him fast because he only has one eye. The policeman says, well, uh, that's because the picture I showed you is his side profile. <laughs> A little frustrated with this ridiculous response, the policeman shows the picture to the second guy for five seconds and then hides it. This is your suspect, he says. How would you recognize him? The second guy smiles, sits up straight, and says, Ha! It'd be too easy to catch him because he only has one ear. <laughs> the policeman angrily responds, What's the matter with you two? Is that the best answer you can give me? He only, they, there's only one eye and one ear showing because it's a side profile. So extremely frustrated at this point, the policeman turns to the third guy, shows him the picture, and asks him in a testy voice, this is your suspect. How would you recognize him? And think hard before you give me a stupid answer. <laughs> the third guy looks intently at the picture for a few moments and then says, the suspect wears contact lenses. <laughs> the policeman is surprised and speechless because he doesn't know if the suspect wears contact lenses. Well, uh, that's an interesting answer. Wait here for a moment while I check his file and I'll get back to you. So the policeman leaves the room, goes to his office, checks the suspect's file, and comes back with a beaming smile on his face. Wow, I can't believe it. It's true. The suspect does in fact wear contact lenses. Good work. How did you make such an astute observation? That's easy, says the third guy. He can't wear normal glasses because he only has one eye and one ear. <laughs> so where is Okay. So uh, we have our first speech from Mickey, this is our icebreaker. And Alex, would you give us the time for the speech and the objectives? Sure. So Mickey is giving her icebreaker speech, as you said. The title of her speech is Reflections and Projections. And she has five to seven minutes to deliver her speech. And her additional objectives are to share in information about herself, to let people to get to know her, two, to stay within the allotted time, and three, to speak with clarity. Good afternoon. My father died several years ago, and it gave me pause to think about my life my focus in life, what I was doing with it, and also thoughts about Judaism, which is my religion and about which I didn't know very much. So I reflected. In years past, I, was, I worked as a case manager for a home care corporation serving elderly adults. My job was to interview, evaluate my clients' needs, such as help with meal preparation, shopping, bathing, transportation, I'd set up a case plan uh, to fill those needs and would visit these uh, clients every, every three months or sooner if needed. Uh, one amusing incident that happened was that um, a client said that her housekeeper told her that she was allergic to dust. Mm. And I thought that that 
not the, not the client, but the housekeeper said that she was allergic to dust. I thought that she's in the wrong occupation. <laughs> anyway, I, listened, I developed relationships with my clients, listening to their many stories of family relationships and their feelings of loneliness, and I learned a whole lot from them. For a couple of years, I worked as a site manager for a re 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 renovated school, being converted into apartments for low and moderate income uh, people. It was interesting working with the construction crew, interviewing the prospective uh, tenants, and dealing with the patent prob uh, problems and collecting rent. Uh, one instance of note is that after deciding on the, on the prospective tenants and who would be able to, uh, to rent an apartment, uh, I received a call from the a Mass Commission for, uh, Against Discrimination. And I thought I was very careful and the people with whom I worked were very careful that we didn't do anything that was wrong. So they came in and uh, I excused myself from my office, and they spent the day looking through my files. And of course, they found nothing wrong. So it was, it was interesting. For several years, I worked, uh, I managed a program for elderly folks who had substantial vision problems. They were severe, but not severe enough to, um, to gain them access to uh, services from the Mass Commission for the Blind. And so we provided sun magnifiers, sunglasses, evaluations in home as to safety, including slippery rugs, and also to mocking stoves so that a person with vision problems could know when it was low and medium and high. So after all of the above, and at the time of my father's passing, I, I decided that I could either go for a PhD in gerontology, or I could learn something more about my religion, Judaism. Well, the choice was not difficult at all. I enrolled in Hebrew college and started a most exciting, thrilling, and very deeply motivating program there. The courses offered were like like a candy store to me. There were so many attractive uh, offerings. I studied Biblical Hebrew, Talmud, prayer, Midrash, Torah, Judaism in the modern and medieval periods, and several courses in early Hasidism. I had the ultimate luck to study with my guru, Rabbi Nehemi of Poland, who taught several courses in early Hasidism. This set, this background, I received a master's in Jewish studies, and this led me on an exciting trip to teach in adult day, uh, adult learning centers in various temples and at Hebrew college. So I was flying. Uh, Apart from marrying a terrific guy, having three great kids and several very great grandchildren, <laughs> the study and teaching of Judaism has been central in my life, and I am eternally grateful for that.